Good day, YouTube. My name is Darren, and my amateur radio call sign is N4VFR. I am here at the uh, Dayton Ham Fest called the Hamvention, my very first time here. And as you look at it, I have my umbrella, and it's a beautiful day with overcast skies. No need for sunscreen. Hey, if you're new to my channel, please consider to subscribe, and let me show you what we have here. Again, this is my first adventure at Hamvention. Or it's Tank Radio. Hey! Hey guys, how, how are you guys doing? Good. Did you bring your beautiful wife with you? Tony! Oh my gosh, hi Tony, I'm Darren. Good to see you, Darren. All right. <laughs> All right, I gotta so get a picture. I, I got some fans here too. <laughs> yeah, 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 okay. Stand by. I come. I come America. No driver's license. I mean, no ham license, no driver's license. I com 705. So we had. Hey, Mike. Hey. Can I have a sticker? Of course you can. <laughs> right on the lens. All right. All right, guys. How are you? This is uh, Mike. K -A -M -R -D. I watch your videos. I watch yours too. <laughs> and I watch your pre-show. Pre Oh, thank you. So thank I'm you. walking around. Nice. That's got it too. All right, so we're here at the ICOM. Because we know you guys own the different box anyway. There's a movie scene. There's a main board. I think the new reveal is. I'm kind of thinking the main board there might be some indicator of the size. This is what you got to do. So you got to, what am I? Write your guess here. Yeah, it's gonna well, go you got a USB, <laughs> you got a USB and three again, port here, out. but on the connector board you got three USB ports over there. So you are looking at these components and there's that, that ICOM is revealing. You got a antenna switchboard. You have a uh, a digital unit down there. <laughs> I think that is. It could be the new software defined radio from ICOM. <laughs> but no, if, if people guess, we get to read the guesses and then we get an idea. Okay, that was, we weren't thinking about that radio. Oh, that's Maybe we need to. Yeah, maybe that needs to be the next one. Serious contest trip. The last thing you want is a user interface that you've got to dig down in the menus because digging down in the menus means you lose cues. I've got a lot of bits and pieces of a of a new radio that we will formally introduce at the Tokyo Ham Fair. Okay. When is that? That's going to be at the end of August. Okay. And, it, and it's been real fun. The, the ad caused social media to blow up with the mystery box. And we've, we've really had fun running with that kind of concept and yeah. continuing it here at Dayton. Yeah. Showing you bits and pieces of it. I mean, there, there's some very interesting things on the board, some very interesting clues. But uh, like I mentioned earlier, I'm a fan of a Matrix series. So yeah. what you see isn't always what is apparent. Uh -huh. But I did hear you making comments earlier about some of the bits and pieces on it. Yeah. What did you discover? Well, it's got a tuner. I was able to identify the tuner and the PA board. But then you mentioned it has what? Three? No, I you've four. Got a, you've got a four US, USBs. You've got a USB three on what is called the main board. Yeah. Then you have the connector board that's got two, three USB ports. Mm -hmm. As well as an Ethernet jack, and to answer the, is it going to have what kind of video? It's yeah. a DVI-D. Yep. I'm assuming it's a DVI-D. It might be a DVI-5, uh -huh. so we don't know that yet. Okay. A lot of uh, 3.5 millimeter plugs on it. Yeah. Of course, our... We noticed the RCA jacks. And we were oh, I didn't even see that either. What? Well, stick with me. I'll teach you something. Yeah, there <laughs> I, you go. I won't teach you what they're for. Oh, okay. they're for but we were speculating what might an RCA jack be for. I don't know. Well, I'm looking right in the middle there. 
again, when you look at it, there's a couple of test points real close to those, but mm. there again, we don't know. Maybe an amplifier control and receive. I have no idea. Mm. ALC. There's there's a marking on the board that says external tuner. Okay. So it'll drive an external antenna tuner. Hmm. RFB board. All the kinds tuner. of stuff. There, there's all kinds of things if you really look close. Yeah. It's too bad this case is on there. We can't uh, can't get a little closer. Some of us don't have as good eyes as others. And then I love how some of the chips have got covers on them. Mm -hmm. It's mm -hmm. kind of like when you look at some of the car magazines and you're like, yeah. what panels are on that thing? <laughs> so we'll know in August. August is when we'll see the official thing. Uh, but I don't know if there will be additional breadcrumbs at uh, Regent's Hoffman. Uh, so we'll have to see what the YouTubers over in Germany have to share with us. Okay. So now what we're doing here, folks are filling out this card as a guess for what this is. Guess what what's, is the, what's the end result of that, if, if somebody guesses it right? Uh, they get bragging rights. They get no. to tell all their buddies, yeah, I was there, I saw it, I told them what it was going to be. But the other thing is, we can get ideas of what people think that it should be, and maybe get some marketing ideas for what the next radio is okay. we should look at. Okay. That's pretty smart. Very good, very good. Well, hey, thanks for taking the time to but one to chat with us. Looking at looking at it closely, a couple of things that we can say it's not. It's not a new D Star handheld. That's true. Well, it could be a big one. <laughs> it's that it's not. See, see, Josh and I were hoping maybe a new VHF UHF mobile. Okay. It's clearly not that. But you can't you can't count out VHF and UHF by what you see in here. You can't. Maybe it's an all band, all mode. 76, 20. Never know. I don't know. I don't know. It's probably something that I'm going to need to buy. <laughs> Absolutely. Yes, and you'll call me and tell me, man, it's a lot more than I want to pay for it. But that's the true hand probably, you coming at. Probably. I always look at I mean, if it were $5, I think most ham would say that. It $4. <laughs> Very cool. I'm excited to see what it is, and uh, I'll be following it down its down its path. So. Cool. It's been a lot of fun. Yes. Yes. This is cool. Hi, man. Thanks, Ray. All right. Thank you. I looks like you got a DVI port, uh, gigabyte from? Ethernet, USB, <laughs> USB B, couple of audio ports. It's got more than one. Uh, you got a antenna board there. It's got more than one reference. And look on this side. You get RCA's. Uh, I'm not sure what those controllers. Another high-speed USB. More Ethernet ports back there. RF boards. What do we get? Well, as far as my guess, maybe it's the new software-defined radio from from Icon. I'm getting hungry, so I gotta take a break. Flex Radio 8000 series. Here's the uh, Flex 8600. <laughs> All right, we're here at the Flex booth with uh, Ed. He's uh, one of the engineers here at Flex Radio, and he's going to talk to us about this uh, the new 8400M that we have here on display. Uh, go ahead and uh, take it off. Yeah, so this is our new, uh, brand new model right off the line. It's our Flex 8400M. We have uh, new models, Flex 8400M, 8400, 8600M, and 8600. They are our new hardware platform for the future. So when we introduced the 6000s uh, almost 10 years ago, uh, you know, we added features over 10 years. We're kind of at that point where we need a new hardware platform to kind of develop features for the next you know, 10 years, 10, 15 years. So uh, this is very familiar, but the insights have all changed. We have 
four times the processing power, both in the CPU and in the FPGA. We've done improvements to the PA and pre-selectors. We have an integrated GPS system with it. You can see the, a small indoor, indoor antenna back here for it. Um, and you know, one of the big things too is that this, is, this comes ready to integrate our adaptive pre-distortion uh, in the power amplifier. So it includes uh, hardware inside uh, to do adaptive pre-distortion. I have one of my viewers mention to me, he says, hey, when you go to the Flex booth, ask them about operating with a third-party amplifier, such as uh, KM3KM, Mercury Lux, or RF2KS, uh, or any other um, amplifiers that are on the market that has pure signal. So, can you explain to my viewers about how you would connect that and where would you connect that in behind the radio? Sure, so uh, like I said, all of these have adaptive pre-distortion hardware built in. We can have a very good sample input on any of the antennas for your transmitter. Uh, now things do get a more complicated as you want to use third-party amplifiers. So there's several steps to it. You can do it standalone. You can, of course, use our PGXL. That has a built-in sampler port for it for adaptive pre-distortion, or you can use an external sampler to pass in you know, the sample data from an external amplifier and correct both the internal PA and the amplifier with adaptive pre-distortion. And we actually talked about it in our banquet last night, and we'll again tonight. We have a running slideshow here that has several slides that show you the different configurations with the different amplifiers. But we expect you to be able to uh, you know, do adaptive pre-distortion, uh, not just with our gear, but with everybody else's as well. So with a third party amplifier, what port would you get the sampling to actually, you know, to plug it in? Uh, so you would decide. So if it's an external if it's an external sampler, you would run the sampling input to some other port, like one of these receive ports. So we have uh, basically a transverter A and a receive only port here. Um, and you would you'd basically transmit out of the high power ones and run the sampler into one of these ports. Oh, okay, so either of these ports. It's the, uh, that's R the RF? It's RXA. RXA and, and then... Transverter A. Transverter A. Yeah. So this is, we're specifically talking about uh, how to, you know, tuning your transfer mic audio, and we have several tools for that. Uh, so you'll, you'll notice the familiar ones, right? Monitor, the level, box, if you're going to use it. But then we kind of get into the interesting ones. So you have your processor. Mm -hmm. So the processor is based on CESSB. If you guys have heard about that, okay. Um, I'm, and it basically, I'm new to the flex, so okay. all these acronyms. So it basically uh, it was a technology developed uh, to increase your uh, average power. And so these these are different settings, levels of compression that increases your average power, like sometimes up to two, three dB, so you can punch through. Uh, you obviously uh, have your um, downward expander to kind of do your kind of noise gate functionality on your voice. And then, of course, you have your completely software-defined transmit filter, right? So you can define whether you want part, some of that low voice time. Maybe you don't want low, you kind of want a little higher, your upper limits. And then, of course, you have uh, deeper settings, so you can have the microphone, whether it's bias or an extra, an extra little bit of gain. Um, and then if I could find it. And then of course you have your transmitter equalizer. So this is a parametric, not a parametric EQ, but it's a, it's an EQ for transmit. So you can kind of shape your voice um, you yeah. how you want it. So each of these goes plus or minus 10 dB, and you can kind of shape it, listen to yourself on monitor, or have a buddy listen to you, and kind of you know dial it in, and it, it does go all the way up to the full bandwidth. Wow, that's that's very interesting. Very nice. The, uh, so you guys check out the Flex Radio. This is, uh, you said this is a brand new unit here? Brand new, so this is 8400M, Flex 8400M. Um, got them in this week for the show. 8400M, no discounts, you guys. Whatever is uh, the price is the same price you're gonna pay. So uh, again, Ed, thank you for the time for uh, showing us the uh, Flex 8400M and the capabilities of it. Hey, look what we got here. We have Josh. Hey. He's making a new purchase, okay. and I'm making a new purchase. I don't, if my wife, 
better not send this to my wife. <laughs> okay. Is she subscribed to my... Right? No, no. No, no, she's not live. This is not live. All right. All right. All right, so Josh is buying one and I'm getting one. How about that? So I got suckered in and I bought a Flex Radio, the new 8600M. And also uh, another YouTuber, as we were at the register, uh, I saw Josh and he was also purchasing one. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm talking to Roger. He's a technician at Yesu. Um, He's telling me take a look at pin four, four and five. five. Should be 24 volts. 24 well, volts. Thereabouts, yep. Okay. And plus minus in one direction, and minus plus in the other direction. Right. Now, if you can do this with the connector plugged in, and get in the back of there, and measure under load, it's even better. Okay, measure it under the load here with some probes. Put some thin probes and put them up inside there. Yeah. So yep. four, four and five are the two underneath, the red and black. The red and black is four and five? Well, on this cable, it could be different. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. All right, guys, okay. so what happened here was I have the 2800 uh, Yesu um, G2800 and also the, the rotor. I sent the rotor in for repair. Roger opened it up and hey, he said nothing was wrong with it. So now he's telling me to uh, check the uh, pins four and five. So that's what, I'll, that's what I'll do. All right, Roger, thank you for your uh, input. Yeah. What I got to do basically is uh, when I get back, Pins four and five, this is the bottom left, and then the middle one. Middle one. That's going to be 24 volts uh, on both yeah. both sides, 24 volts DC. So i got to measure that. And if it's not 24 volts, then that's, this could be the problem uh, why it's not going into uh, in the high speed. Well, guys, this is, uh, it's really fun here to do a lot of... Uh, sightseeing, a lot of eye candy of uh, equipment, um, a lot of new stuff. Uh, ICOM has that new radio. They basically showed you those components that are inside that specific radio and you basically got to guess what it is. So they didn't reveal anything new. Uh, then I went to Flex Radio and I started asking questions uh, personally. So man i'm really interested in the flex radios now so i got an icom 7610 icom 7300 i'm an icom person and i also have the anon i had the anon 7000 i sold it now i got the anon g2 i got the older anon the um the 200d at my other radio station so i am going to try out the flex radio but so far it's been a, a great show here i'm being here for only one day event for me because uh, I got to go back to the flight simulators tomorrow back in Cincy. All right, guys, this is what we got. Oh, man, that's all the onions I get. Yeah, so I get this pork loin sandwich and look at those itty bitty onions. So pork loin sandwich, $9. Hamvention special. Cool beans. I hope you guys enjoyed my video of my adventures here in Hamvention, 2024 in Dayton, Ohio. My name is Darren and my amateur radio call sign is N4VFR. I want to say 73s. Have a great day and I'll see you on the next video.